Hi, I'm Tara with Simply Made Eats and welcome to my channel where I share quick and easy recipes to make your life just a little bit simpler. Today we're making these baked Italian chicken thighs with a gremolata sauce. They are so good and they're so easy. If you're like me, it's the end of summer and you're just like over any kind of dinner idea. And this is um, just a really simple one. It takes you about 10 minutes to prep it and it's in the oven. So. We're going to get started by chopping up some garlic and just getting this really quick and easy marinade ready. For the marinade, we're going to get started by chopping up some garlic. We've just got two cloves here. And then you're going to trim your chicken up. You want this nice and clean, and you're going to pat it dry with some paper towels. Then go ahead and add that into a bowl. Next, you're going to add in the garlic. Then we've got a spice mixture of Italian herbs. This is garlic powder, onion powder. We've got some red pepper flakes and some other goodies. And then we're gonna add in some Dijon mustard, olive oil, and red wine vinegar. And this is all gonna be linked in the description. Then you're just gonna use some tongs to just toss these up. You wanna really coat all the chicken thighs with that mustard mixture. And then we're gonna cover this up with some plastic wrap and allow it to sit at room temperature for 30 minutes. Once our chicken's marinated for about 30 minutes, you can go like 45. I wouldn't go longer than that though, just because it has the red wine vinegar in it. We are just gonna transfer these into a baking dish. And you don't need olive oil or anything in here because we've already got it in the marinade and it really sticks to the chicken thighs, which is awesome because you get a lot of flavor like that. The garlic is all sticking to it too. And then any of this extra garlic, I really like to just like coat right on top of the chicken thighs. Just spread it on top of there. We don't want any to go to waste. Next, we're gonna stick this in a 375 degree oven. Just a quick note about the cook time. It's really gonna depend on the thickness of your chicken thighs. Mine are on the thinner side, so I'm gonna set my timer for 25 minutes to check on them then. I don't wanna overcook these, so if you've got really thick chicken thighs, then you know they're gonna cook longer. Okay, so while our chicken's cooking, we are gonna make our gremolata sauce. Gremolata sauce is a lot like pesto, but it's even easier. Um, you can make this in the food processor, but you can also just like chop it up like we're gonna do today. It's just the easiest little topping, and it's so fresh. I love parsley, um, and that's like the main ingredient. So it just it makes everything taste so good, and I love parsley on chicken. So what I'm doing now is I'm just pulling off um, most of the stems of the parsley. I'm not picky like this. Um, I don't care if I eat the stems, it doesn't bother me. I just am just gonna pull off a couple, um, you know, just to get the majority of the stems out. What I love about this recipe too, um, just like the chicken in general, you can serve this with, with potatoes, you can serve it with pasta, you can do rice. It's just like really versatile and my kids really like it. Um, I just, you just gotta make sure that you trim your chicken thighs really good or like buy a good variety like smart chicken or something that isn't gonna have a bunch of fat on there. Most of it cooks off, but you just, with chicken thighs, I'm like super picky about them. I used to like only buy chicken breasts, but now I, um, I really like the darker meat. I think it has a lot more flavor. Okay, so next it's all about the choppy choppy and you wanna get this really nice and fine because we want like the parsley to release some oil. That's why a lot of people don't use any olive oil with this. Um, I like to use a little bit of olive oil, but you don't absolutely need it. So if you don't have it, you can still make the sauce, but you wanna make sure that you chop this really nice and fine. It's gonna take you a few minutes. This is like my last week of cooking with the kids home, which I'm kind of sad about. I'm not like really ready for them to go back to school. It was such a short summer, but it will be a little bit easier to get work done. That's for sure. Those of you with kids know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like so hard to get any regular tasks done. Especially like I've been trying to like keep them really busy this summer. And we've been traveling a lot. So that's really hard to keep things going. You'll see like as you start chopping this up really fine, it does start to release some oils and that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so this is the texture you're looking for. And once you get it nice and minced like this, we are gonna add it all to a bowl. Always sticking to the knife. Okay, 
Next, we're gonna add in the zest from a half of a lemon. And you don't wanna go too deep on these because that once you get into the white, it's gonna make it a little bit more bitter. In general, the gremolata sauce is just parsley, lemon zest, and garlic, and that's it. I just like to add a couple extra goodies into it. Um, but you can definitely keep it classic like that. It's honestly easier to just keep the lemon whole first. I also have a cut on my hand and it's like killing me right now. I also like to squeeze in just a little bit of that lemon juice in, maybe like a half of a teaspoon, not a whole lot, but I don't want the lemon to go to waste. So next we're gonna add in three cloves of minced garlic. I know it's a lot, but it's just like the best part of this dish. You wanna make sure it's really nice and minced because nobody wants to get like a big giant chunk of garlic in their mouth, at least I don't. And then we're gonna add in about a half a teaspoon of olive oil. Next we've got some salt and pepper, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And then we're just gonna give us a nice stir just to combine all the flavors. You can add a little bit more olive oil if you want, if you want it to be a little bit more um, oily textured. I'm gonna add in about a half a teaspoon more. So that's just, I just added one tablespoon of olive oil. And you wanna use a high quality olive oil if you can. It makes a difference, especially when you have like an, a three ingredient recipe. And that's it. This is gonna to top our chicken. It's just a really simple little sauce. Mm. It's so good. Salty, lemony. Garlicky, fresh, so good. I could literally eat, eat this like salad. If you love spicy, red pepper flakes would be so good in this. So I just checked the chicken and after 25 minutes, mine are almost done because they're really thin. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and broil them for a couple minutes just to get like a little bit of crispiness on that outside. Once that comes out of the oven, I'll just tent it with a little bit of foil and just let it sit for about five minutes before serving. Then once it cools, I like to just add on my gremolata sauce. And you can definitely just put this on the side for people to serve it with. And then I like to top mine with some Parmesan cheese. I still got lemon zest coming off too, which is really yummy. And this is the perfect Italian baked chicken. It's gonna go great with potatoes or pasta or rice or anything you wanna serve it with. I could just add like a pile of cheese to the top of this. It's so good. I love Parmesan cheese, especially the Reggiano. So good. Also Pecorino would be good on this. Nice and salty. That's it, we're all done with this baked Italian chicken recipe with our gremolata sauce. I hope you guys decided to make it. Make sure to subscribe so we can keep on cooking together and check out my garlic risotto recipe too. That would go awesome with this. And it's my most popular bead recipe on YouTube. So I know you guys love it. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.